Judith Leiser was a Dutch painter of the early 17th century. During her lifetime, Leiser's work was respected by her fellow painters and popular among the people of Holland, a feat almost unheard of for a woman at that time. While only about 20 works are distinctly attributed to her, Leiser's distinct use of color and technique have distinguished her from her peers, making her one of the greatest artists of the Dutch Golden Age. Before we can begin to learn about Judith, we must understand the time in which she painted. The Baroque period began when Holland was in the midst of a golden age. Holland's prosperity was caused by three things. The migration of intelligent Protestants from France to Holland, a cheap source of fuel, and finally, smart business moves in the New World and Asia. This created a very happy Holland. Because of this wealth, the common people of Holland were able to fund the arts, thus leading to a distinct form of art only found in the Netherlands. The Dutch painted in many different styles, in an order called the Hierarchy of Genres. These genres, in order of importance, include historical paintings which focused on events from the past and religious subjects, portrait paintings which were done in large part for the middle class, genre paintings which were paintings of everyday life, landscapes, which obviously showed landscapes, and finally, still life paintings, which focused on great detail and te texture. Some of these paintings even look like photographs. Now, back to our subject. Leicester was born in Harlem, Holland in 1609. Judith did not come from an artistic family. Unlike many other women artists, she did not have an artist father who could help her establish connections and teach her techniques. In fact, her father, Jan Leister, was a brewer and cloth maker. We do not know how Judith was trained, but when her family moved to Vreeland, another town in Holland, it is suspected that she was influenced by the Utrecht Caravagisti, Hendrik Ter Bruten, and Gerrit van Hornthorst. These Dutch men were inspired by the Italian painter Caravaggio, meaning that Judith was indirectly influenced by this feisty Italian artist. This influence can be seen in Leicester's painting, The Proposition. This is a genre painting, which was Judith's primary style. The lamp in the painting creates a contrast of darkness and light, also called chiarosco. Illuminated by lamp light, its subjects are a woman and a man, the latter of which appears to be offering money for the woman's sexual favors. This was a common theme of Caravaggio and subsequently the Caravaggisti paintings. However, Unlike those paintings, the woman of the subject does not seem eager or inviting. Maybe Judith had a different view of women involved in prostitution. By the time Judith was 24 years old, she was one of only two women to be in the St. Luke's Guild of Harlem. A guild is, according to thefreedictionary.com, an association of persons of the same trade or pursuits formed to protect mutual interests and maintain standards. This was a prestigious honor for Judith and within two years she had three apprentices. It is also around this time that Judith sued fellow artist Franz Halls for stealing one of the said apprentices. But this is not the first time Judith and Halls have been associated together. In fact, some believe that Judith was actually a pupil of Halls. The two artists' works are very similar. Halls, like Judith, painted many genre scenes and his subjects are often full of emotion. For example, look at Leicester's painting Mary Company. Like Halls, Judith uses rougher brushstrokes. Also, the faces of her subjects are very jolly, something that is also seen in Halls' painting John Romp and His Sweetheart. One thing that is found in many of Judith's paintings and some of Halls is the presence of musical instruments. In this painting, it is a violin, but in others, it is a flute, a lute, or a guitar. I would like to think that this is because Leicester found joy not only in painting, but also in the art of music, an art form often taught to women. June 1st, 1636. No, Judith didn't die, but she did get married. While it is possible that Judith collaborated with her husband on some of his pieces, after having five children, Judith only produced two other works, one of which is a painting of a tulip. Speaking of tulips, 
After the tulip was introduced to Europe in the mid-16th century, the flower rapidly became a coveted luxury item and a status symbol. Growers attempted to obtain and breed the most varied and beautiful tulips, leading to a booming market for these colorful flowers. As the flowers grew in popularity, professional growers paid higher and higher prices for the bulbs, and by 1634, some tulips were worth more than a house. Because the bulbs' prices were merely based on speculation, their market crashed, consequently devastating the Dutch economy. As the date of the painting is 1643, a little past the bubble burst, it would make sense that Judith would paint one. What were Judith's impacts? While Judith was, a pop was popular during her lifetime, her death in 1660 led her into near obscurity. Her influence on genre paintings was overlooked, and many of her paintings were attributed to other artists, such as Franz Hals. This was possibly because Judith only signed her works with the initials J.L. and a star, in an allusion to a pun on her name, Leicester, meaning leading star or lone star. However, it was this very signature that helped historians rediscover her work years later.